everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. Out here cruising around in the Tacoma this morning, and something seemed a little different to me, and it was with throttle response, you know, acceleration. I did a video a few days ago. I was kind of demonstrating how the Bluetooth works with the pedal commander, and I changed the setting, apparently. I think I was running through the different settings, and I didn't put it where I normally drive with it. Now, I've got the Bluetooth app up here, and it's on Sport 4. I typically run on Sport 3. So, conveniently, I'm going to go ahead and hit the minus button and be back to Sport 3, where I want to be. It was uh, actually just a bit more responsive than I want it to be. And that's the great thing about the Pedal Commander. You can change it when you want. Just make sure that you're not on the accelerator. Ideally stopped when you change the setting, but definitely not on the accelerator. And can you do that with a tune? No, you're stuck with it. Anyway, I'm not trying to turn this into a, a Pedal Commander video, but uh, I just noticed uh, that as a little different this morning. So now it's back where I normally keep it. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about today were tires. You know, there's one thing that's very annoying when you change out the tires on your Toyota Tacoma, and all of us enthusiasts do it, right? We want bigger, meatier, more aggressive, meaner looking tires. So we go with the bigger tire. Well, inevitably, they lose pressure, and they seem to lose pressure quicker than regular tires, regular size tires do. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because they're just bigger, there's more surface area to heat up and cool down, so that's why the air escapes, I don't know. But I find about once a month or so, I lose pressure. And it's not just in one tire, so it's not like I've got a bad tire or maybe a nail or something in a tire. They all do it consistently. So I jump in the truck this morning, and I'm a stickler for tire pressure for some reason, I don't know. And I pull it up on the screen, and I see that I'm at uh, 33 all the way around, except the back right corner, I'm at 32. Now, I normally run about 36 PSI. That's where I like to keep the tires at. So it bugs me. It bugs me as I'm driving around and now I'm even more conscious of it. And they feel a little bit squishier, a little bit softer, which doesn't make a lot of sense because after you drive for a while, the pressures go up. Right now I'm running 35 across the board, which is where I ideally want to be, even though I guess if I keep them at 35 or 36, they're going to be up at about 37, 38 once they heat up and you're out driving around, right? So maybe it's not such a bad idea to set them at, say, 33, knowing that they're going to go up anyway and I'm going to get the ride that I guess I was shooting for. Who knows? But it's something to be aware of. And because of it, I went out and bought an air compressor. Now, this was several years ago. I got sick of going to the gas stations where you pull up and the gauge doesn't work or the pump doesn't work or it's so slow that you're there for three and a half days trying to fill up your tires so that means you have to buy a compressor so not only when when you spend the money or you spend the money for newer bigger tires you also have to invest in an air compressor now I got one and I'm not sponsored by anybody but I got mine at Lowe's uh, it's one of those kind of cylindrical round ones I think it's like five and a half to six and a half horsepower something like that and i find that you have to have one that's at least that size because if you go with one of those smaller oblong canisters you know the tiny ones that are a lot cheaper of course they don't fill up the tires very quickly and they they run out of capacity quickly so you spend a lot of time waiting for the tank to recharge as you're filling up and I think it's just because of the pressure in that bigger volume tire. Obviously, if you have to put more air in, it's going to take you longer to fill up. But it's not that much air. It's only, what, the regulars run something like 29 to 32, I think, something like that. So I'm really only putting in about 3 to 4 more PSI than what I would on a stock normal size tire. What I'll call a normal size tire. And I gotta think too, or I have to say, that even the one that I have at that rating is 
maybe right on the edge. I think if you got something that was more like eight horsepower, something like that, or bigger, then you start to get into those great big tanks, right? And who has room or wants to lug those around? But they're the ones that work better if you're in a hurry. And I'm pretty impatient when it comes to inflating tires. I don't like to sit there. I feel like I'm wasting my time, right? And why should I have to be doing it once a month? It's crazy. So it's just another thing that you have to kind of consider when you go with bigger tires, as well as rubbing and all that stuff. I've talked about that on the channel. And I should give an update because my truck is not lifted and I did go with a, a bigger more aggressive tire as far as really the width I mean I think height wise it's negligible what I've got on here now um, but I don't have any rubbing or anything like that people ask me occasionally you know what size can I put on and those kind of questions you know it's kind of like somebody asking you what shirt should I wear today well I don't know what color shirts do you like what style shirts do you like uh, what are you going to wear it with? What clean shirts do you have? You know what I mean. There's all kinds of variables and things. I do have a video out there. If you search Rob Motive Tire or Tire Size on the channel, there's a chart that shows what different tires you can put on your Tacoma under different circumstances. In other words, whether you're lifted, whether you're at one inch, two inch, I think it goes up to three inches, something like that, so that you don't have any kind of rubbing or anything. And that's the biggest problem with going with bigger tires, in my opinion, it's the rubbing. I mean, who wants to go and spend that kind of money? Because it's going to cost you somewhere, if you go with wheels, it's going to cost you somewhere in the mid-2,000-ish range, $2,300 to $2,500, $2,600. Of course, you can spend a heck of a lot more, just depends, again, on what you like and what you decide to go with. So. You kind of have to consider all of these things when you're doing it, right? And I'd be curious, how many people out there that have a bigger tire setup, or maybe even not, have invested in an air compressor? Or do you always depend on a gas station, or maybe even go back to the tire shop where you got the tires, to have them adjust the pressures? And that is convenient, by the way. Going back to those places, Discount Tire will, for free, check and fill up your tires anytime you want to go there. But the problem is time. It's all about time and patience, right? I don't like to wait, and if I go by that place, at least where I'm at, there's always a line. There's always people there. And that's because they're experiencing the same kind of things that I'm experiencing, right? Sudden loss should be a syndrome. Sudden tire pressure loss, STPL. I don't know. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know if you've invested in a, in a compressor or not, or you go through that. I'd just be curious. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye. Somebody just waved at me. They're driving a Tacoma. They must know what the channel is. Awesome. Whoever you were in that gray truck, how you doing?